Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I've had so many of you make this request for this video that I'm just gonna go ahead and knock it out. Um, a few years ago, I made a Class Dojo tutorial and Class Dojo has changed so much since I made that video. So I thought I'd pop on here and I'd share the latest updates, tips, and tricks that I use in my very own classroom with you guys, all about Class Dojo. So let's go ahead and get started. If you want to grab your computer or your iPad to see all these different things, or if you're watching me on your phone and you would like to just show it on your computer, you totally can follow along. If you have any questions, don't forget to comment down below. Let's get rolling. I am back today to share my updated Class Dojo tutorial with you. I'm going to go over some of the new pieces that they've added to Class Dojo since I last did my original Class Dojo um, tutorial. Um, there are some new pieces that I absolutely love. and I know a lot of people in the past were worried about having it up on the screen all of the time, but I think they've introduced some really great pieces that allow you to have it up on the board. Um, and that's what we're going to go over today. So. Let's go ahead. I've already signed up with a Mixed Crayons account. Here is my class and you can see that I have Christina, Aaron, and Lindsay. Um, we're not going to touch so much on the basics. I really want to focus more on the new pieces that they've introduced to Class Dojo that make it simply amazing. So you do have a toolbar down here at the bottom. We're going to blow this up here. Um, down at the bottom you have all these different pieces and you have attendance which is great to use every day. You can see that oh. Erin came in late or she was kind of present and then she left early. Um, there's a lot of different options that you can have, but it's always important to take attendance first. So from there, right next to it, you have select multiple, which is another place for you to select multiple students. If not, all of the class is um, following directions, but here you can also see that you can select all, you can select none um, and give everybody points or certain people points. This random, picker here at the bottom is a little bit different than the one that I'm going to show you um, that connects to your tablet or phone. This one on your computer screen is definitely used to make sure that you're getting every student. Um, are you looking at every student? Are you giving them positive, re like, positive reinforcement with Class Dojo points? Um, instead of, you know, just focusing on those four or five that you typically focus on because, you know, who knows why. Um, the random picker here clicks through and you that either notifies the student that they're being watched, which I found, um, but you have the immediate option to give feedback. It's going to be a little bit different than what we uh, talk about here in a little bit. You also have a timer um, that shows up and you can actually move around the screen, which comes in really handy. You also have a stopwatch if that's something that you'd like to use. Um, this big ideas section is fairly new. Um, Class Dojo, I believe last year came out with uh, quite a few different social and emotional learning videos um, that my students absolutely loved. And right now we're really focusing on working through these social and emotional learning um, and we'll probably revisit them after the new year. But I absolutely love them. My students do too. In this area, you also have other amazing ways to use Class Dojo, which includes class story cards. Um, and then there's this creativity section, which I honestly have not gotten to yet. Um, but I hear that a lot of people are absolutely loving it. Anything that Class Dojo comes out with, I'm pretty much in love with. So um, another great resource for you to have an open discussion with your students and here you can see when you click on it you can add it to your class story um, which is kind of like a facebook page within dojo to share with your parents um, you also have quick access to student accounts which means you have this poster where they can log in they can customize monsters they can actually add work to a digital portfolio which didn't used to be there um, but it's just very simple. It's just a quick poster that allows them to log in in your classroom. And you can also get invites to send home where they can log in. Now, Class Dojo does offer a parent connection where you can invite parents. Here in this area, you can send messages to parents. Um, this story section is actually used, again, more as a Facebook homepage. Um, personally, I do not use messages or stories. I simply just use this classroom as well as my new favorite addition, which is the toolkit, which we'll get to here in a second. A few other basics um, that I'm gonna go over really quickly. Over in settings, 
You can edit your class at any point, but you can see that you have these tabs at the very top where you can quickly add or get invites. Um, but this is also where you edit your skills. So you can increase points, you can change the emoji, and this new box right here says you can actually change what parents see. Do you want them to only see the positive points? Do you want them to see no points at all and you really just wanna use it as a communication tool? That's totally up to you and you now have that option. Another update that they did a few years ago um, was your display settings. Here, you can actually increase or decrease your avatar size depending on, you know, if you're OCD and you want things to line up, you totally can. Um, here, you can also sort your students by their first name or their last name. And I, you can actually show or hide last names. I have the last names hidden, but you can totally change it. And you can see in the background over here, as I click those, that those things change. Another thing that was a huge game changer for people using Class Dojo were showing award notifications. Now, you have a positive one that has a positive bell tone, and then you have your needs work or negative sounds, as people used to call them. What I've done is in my classroom, I do not let students see the needs work notification. So it'll say, you know, someone needs to work on staying on task, but it won't show that person's name. Now, I can also remove the negative or needs work sound. That's totally up to you but you have those options if you so wish to change them. Um, another thing that they've added is you can have a combined point total. You can have separate totals, which gives them how many points they've earned and how many points they've lost today or needs work today. And then you can have it where they don't show points at all. I have mindset on combined total. My students absolutely love it. That's kind of how we function. Now let's get to my new favorite part about Class Dojo. I'm gonna show it to you here on the screen. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate my computer screen with my phone because this is actually what I do in my classroom is I run my Class Dojo from my phone. And what this has basically allowed me to do is be in two places at once. Doesn't that sound amazing? <laughs> it truly does. Um, I'm able to really keep my entire classroom in check, especially if I'm working with one student who's having a really hard time. So let's go take a look at this. The toolkit is brand new. The toolkit offers eight different options. You have a timer, you have random, that's a little bit different than the random down here at your bottom, at the bottom of your screen. Um, you have a group maker, noise meter, music, the today, think, pair, share, and directions. I'm gonna take you through all of these and why I love each and every one of these because this is definitely something that I use every second of every day. So from here on out, you're gonna hear me talk, you're gonna see my screen change, but I'm going to be manipulating everything from my phone. So we're gonna start at the top left and work our way across, here we go. So let's go ahead and start with timer. Timer is exactly as it says. And when I click on timer, I'll show you here quick, you immediately on your phone also have these different options and you can type different options as well. What I'm gonna do from my phone is I'm gonna go ahead and select 15 seconds. And what you're going to see happen is a timer is going to pop up on the screen. It's going to turn blue, then it's going to turn red, and then there is an audible sound. Now, this is really easy to add 10 seconds to if you'd like to, I just clicked that. If you need to restart it or pause it, you can do either one from your computer or your phone, but it's a great visual for students if you're like, hey, you have 15 seconds to get lined up, here's your visual. Ah, there's the sound, perfect. Then I can go ahead and close that from my phone. I don't have to go back to my computer before we leave the room for specials or whatever. We're ready to roll. Next we have random. And the difference is between this random and the random at the bottom of the screen is this one is simply for like calling on students or dismissing students. You do not have to reward or award the student any kind of feedback points. This is simply to choose, to pick, to you know do whatever. It simply shows up on the screen and you do not have to award points and I can click pick again and I can pick a different student. Um, it comes in really handy if you're like, ooh, I'm gonna pick so-and-so or you can't quite pick. No more popsicle sticks, no more handwriting them. Class Dojo just does it for you right from your phone. Ta-da! The group maker is another thing that I use all of the time. And here you can see it's red. Um, and I can actually choose how many students per group, but look at this, it shows up at the same as on my phone. It says don't group together. So I can actually go in and I can say, oh, Christina doesn't work well with Michelle. Yep, 
those two can't be together. No one has to know. And what I'm gonna do from my phone is now I'm gonna put my students into groups of two. Ta-da, Michelle and Christina are not together and all of these show up on my screen, which makes it very easy for them to start grouping themselves. No more partner cards, no more, oh, you put me with so-and-so again on purpose. Nope. Literally, you can set it up. No one has to know that they don't work well with so-and-so, and it's very, very easy and effective. Um, the other thing that you can use is your noise meter. And originally, when you get this set up, as you can see, it's already going. It's connected to my computer microphone, which means you're going to have to allow that access. Now, I can increase or decrease the sensitivity from my phone. You cannot do this from your computer screen. Right now, the sensitivity is right in the middle. If I take it all the way to the left, which is a negative sign, you're gonna see that my levels drop. It's not as intense. Or I can increase the sensitivity and the little <laughs> those little lines are gonna dance <laughs> because I am very, very close to my computer microphone. This is something to keep in mind. If you want to use the noise meter, you totally can, but you have to remember that it's going to use the microphone from your computer. So if it were me, I would completely turn my sensitivity down and I would actually turn my computer away from myself so the microphone is actually pointing out to my classroom. So another great tool, I don't use this one as often, um, but another great tool for you to use. Next, we have directions. And directions is this green little thing and this is kind of how it shows up on your phone as well and what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a little secret. Um, I've had people message me and they're like oh, I would love to use the directions piece on this toolkit thing but there's no way to add visuals for my kinders. <laughs> Let me help you. Let's pretend that we're going to do a project in my room and we're going to need to put our name on our paper first because we always put our name on our paper first because otherwise our teacher loses their mind. Am I right? Am I right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find an emoji and I'm going to add it. From there, you put your name on it, then you're going to color. I'm going to find the crayon emoji, going to add that one. And then you're going to go find your teacher and find out what you need to do next. Now I'm going to cast this onto my computer screen. Ta-da! I now have, this is what we're doing for your project. You put your name first, there is a pencil. You can color, oh, there's a crayon emoji. And then teacher, you have the teacher emoji. You can use emojis for directions and Dojo has allowed that and it is amazing. So you don't have to worry about typing super long instructions. You have digital learners anyways that know how to read Emojis, now you might have to be a little more explicit about what emojis mean what, but you can definitely use them for your directions. And as you can see, it takes over the entire screen. No one can see dojo points. You can still hear, and I can still give dojo points for people that are being on task, and you can still hear it, but there's no notification and the project instructions do not go away. Another one of my favorite things to use is Think, Pair, Share. I've done this in the morning to practice um, a collaborative conversation or a calm conversation. Um, how do we talk to a partner, especially after a break? We need to review those skills. And Class Dojo already has some questions in there. So this is one that's already in there. What are you grateful for today? So we've practiced turning and talking to a partner and sharing that conversation. Like I take a turn and then I listen. This is a really important social emotional piece. And it's also a great way to build community within your classroom. You can also go in to think, pair, share, and add your own questions. So if you have a lesson and as you're you know, closing, you wanna have them turn and talk about something that they did well today, you can totally add that. Next, we're moving on to today, which is this little yellow button right here. Um, I use this every day. Uh, I use Class Dojo every day in my classroom. I put it up on my board just like this, and then I go out in the hall or before my kids get there, I go ahead and make a morning announcement. Now I've done this where I make a whole letter and they have to find grammatical errors or the words that I've misspelled. But usually what I do is I have them like turn in their homework and get a pencil and that kind of stuff. So then I just hit start now and you can see that it takes over the entire classroom board. But what I love about this is as soon as my students start coming up the stairs and into the hallway, I have to be out of my classroom and in the hall. So if I forget that it's library day and I forget to put that on the board, I no longer have to run into the room, erase it and write it on the board. I just pull out my phone, 
I edit the note really quick and I cast it back up to my computer or my board in my classroom and I'm done. And I don't have a smart board. This is completely from my Mac computer through Apple TV projecting onto my marker board in my classroom. It's nothing fancy, but oh my goodness, it has saved me so many times from handling someone in the hallway or helping someone in the hallway open a jammed locker and then someone remembering, oh, hey, we have to turn in our library books today. And I'm like, oh no, I can't get back in the room because I'm unjamming this locker. So it's also a great tool to use. And last but not least within the toolkit, they've included music. Now there's two different kinds of music. There is a focus and there is active. My students absolutely love focus. And when I tap it, the little thing that I love is it doesn't automatically start playing. Some people don't have access to Pandora or Spotify because of, um, because of district website restrictions and that's totally fine but what class dojo has done has included music that is calm helps student focus and there's no commercials or ads and it's free so i simply push the play button either from my computer or my phone and this calm soothing beat of music comes out it's very soothing my students ask for it on a regular basis um but it's definitely an amazing tool so that's definitely one of my favorite updates of class dojo um i wanted to share that with you guys because it's been a while since i did a class dojo tutorial and so many things have changed um if you have any questions don't be afraid to reach out to me on any of my social media um, which is listed in the description box below you can email me you can dm me um I'm always willing to help and figure out what's happening and what's going on. And I absolutely love Class Dojo. I've said before um, that I love using it in my classrooms and sometimes it works really well for classes and sometimes it doesn't and that's okay. My class right now absolutely thrives using Class Dojo. So I've found a way to make it meaningful and helpful for my students. And I, it's been such a sanity saver. I couldn't not share it with you all. Thank you so much for watching to the very end of this video. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get all the notifications for the next video that I upload. Leave a comment below with your favorite tip or trick. And I hope that I helped you today. I will see you next time, guys. Thank you so much. In the description box below, you will find links to my TPT store as well as my P.O. box if you so choose to send me some lovely snail mail. I love you all very much. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye.